beautiful. How are you this beautiful sunshiny day? You are a gorgeous rat snake. You're here to help protect my farm from rodents, aren't you? I'm so tempted to pick you up and say hello. You're really long. You're not scared. You're just sunning. Your tail goes all the way there. You're beautiful, sweetheart. Now you get out of here before Autumn sees you and gets scared. I don't know what she would do if she saw a snake. It might scare her. Come on, baby girl. Alright, I'm going to go put the dogs where they need to go. Oh my gosh. She didn't even move when Autumn went that close. She thinks she's hiding. She doesn't know I see her. That's funny. She's just staying just really still so that I think she's a stick. That's right. All right, I'm going to reach out with my toe and just nudge her to get her going so I can bring the bucks out without scaring them. Go on, sweetie. Yes, I jumped a little. It's not because I'm scared of her, but because I guess it just makes you jump when something moves quick. <laughs> good girl. Keep up the good work protecting our farm. I made her go faster. I just wanted to pay you, sweet thing. I wasn't going to hold you this time. Oh, I can feel him vibrating. He's trying to make noises. He's trying to make his tooty noises. It feels really weird. It's vibrating like a cell phone. Well, little buddy, there's a reason why I grabbed you. There is so much food for you here in my garden. Enjoy. Enjoy, enjoy. All too often, I hear about stories of people, even homesteaders, who are afraid of, or even worse, killing very harmless, very helpful critters on our homestead. Did you know that snakes on the homestead are a sign of a healthy ecosystem and they are actually there to help get rid of the pest situation of rats and mice and other rodents that might be harming your animals and your garden. So it's important to know that these creatures are there because you're providing a home for them that gives them a healthy place to live. Don't, don't disrespect them by maiming them or killing them, please. In the garden, this can even be the truth too. If you take a look at your garden and you find pest damage from insects that are coming to eat your plants. There is a certain level of damage that is completely acceptable in a garden. A few holes here and there from caterpillars is not when you need to worry. It's not when you need to bust out the pesticides. This is severe damage. This is causing you crop failure. This is when you need to pay attention and find the balance between what you can handle as acceptable loss and what you can't. You basically need to determine your threshold. Your threshold of what you are going to allow to have be a problem and what you're going to work against and fight. For me, seeing a few cabbage worms early on in the season, I begin handpicking them. If the problem gets to be about 20% or higher, in my crop, then I begin applying BT, or Bacillus thuringiensis. This is a natural pesticide that only affects caterpillar. It does not harm our honeybees or any other beneficial insects unless we are applying it to the host plant of a caterpillar that is a beneficial butterfly. So I do not apply my BT to my parsley, fennel, dill, um, 
of course milkweed, any of the plants that the good butterflies are going to be eating on, I don't bother with that. But my cabbages, broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts could all probably benefit from a good application of Bt several times throughout the growing season. You do have to reapply Bt often if it rains. It is a natural organic pesticide that is safe to use in your garden. Ah, the beloved flea beetle. Flea beetle loves eggplant. Flea beetle can destroy the leaves of the eggplant very quickly. You see how many tiny holes there are. But the beauty of it is eggplants have such a long association with flea beetles that they usually continue growing and continue flowering and fruiting despite the damage on the leaves. It doesn't kill them. Most of the time, flea beetle damage is not something that's going to take out your eggplant crop. Learning to identify different types of pests and how to treat them using target specific pesticides that are organic in nature is one of the most important lessons as a gardener. All too often, I see examples of gardeners in Facebook groups across the country talking about how they've covered their whole garden in diatomaceous earth. Did you know that diatomaceous earth kills any insect with an exoskeleton that it comes in contact with? That includes ladybugs, honeybees, praying mantis, butterflies, anything with an exoskeleton that touches the DE is going to die. So if you are applying it to your entire garden, even though it's organic in nature, it can cause a much bigger problem for you because it destroys the natural ecosystem. When you allow a few caterpillar to come on your broccoli, that's the dinner bell, as my mom would say. Calling all of the caterpillar predators to your garden. The dinner bell is rung when they find a few. They let their friends know and they all come and pick them off. You guys saw early in the season, we had wasps picking off our caterpillars left and right. Now granted, there are some times you must use some type of organic pesticide in your garden. Just use it properly. Know what you're treating, know what that pesticide treats, and who it affects. Because you don't want to use something that's broad spectrum on a small problem that could be treated with something that is target specific. Sometimes you don't have that choice. And sometimes you just gotta do a lot more research to find out what your choices are. Here at Wholesome Roots, we do have some pest issues. We do have some pest problems. There's no doubt in that. But part of it is because we provide a natural ecosystem. We allow our perimeter areas to remain for native plants and wildlife. This can have its blessings and its curses. But all in all, I feel like if I'm growing food to keep my body healthy and to protect the environment by growing organically, then I also want to protect the whole environment, not just my garden, but the entire ecosystem surrounding my homestead. It has to be in a healthy balance in order for my food to be truly healthy and the right thing for my body. to my attention recently that there's a lot of people out there that feel like master gardeners are not what they say they are or that they don't know enough about things in the garden that are more important but I'm here to tell you that that's not the case because even though many master gardener programs do emphasize the use of non-organic pesticides 
that is not all they teach you because they teach you how to identify the pest, what stage in development that pest is best treated at, what integrated pest management techniques could help prevent that pest from coming in the first place, and first and foremost, what organic products work against the pest. They don't begin at this pesticide is used on everything. They begin with teaching you about the cycles of pest outbreak in your garden so that you know the first things that you need to do and the first steps you need to take to help prevent further issues and to resolve the issues that you have in a more environmentally friendly way. In college, I took a program for greenhouse management and operations. One of the required classes was Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. In this class in college, you learned everything from every detail and every perspective of every insect there is in your garden pest management. One of the requirements at the end of the class was to pass and receive my Pesticide Applicators Handlers License. I'm an organic gardener. I've always been an organic gardener. What do I need a pesticide applicator's license for? Well, I tell you what, the information I learned in order to be able to pass that test with flying colors has helped me to be a better organic gardener. My professor for that class was really, really excited about having me in her class because I took a serious interest in all of the different ways of identifying pests and determining the ways to treat them. I take it very seriously. So seriously that I was the first and only student ever to receive a 99 in that class. Now that was a few years ago, so there may have been more since then, but it is really hard to get a 99 in a college level horticulture class. Now, I'm not telling you this because I'm pompous or egotistical. It's not because I think I'm better than other gardeners that didn't go through the classes and programs and professional training that I did. It is because I want you to know that when I give you advice, it is not coming from something I read on a blog or watched on a YouTube channel. It's coming from years of professional training and even more years of hands-on experience. So I urge you, please reach out. Anytime you're having a pest problem in the garden, let me know. Send me pictures of the damage, send me pictures of the insects. I will help you determine the safest, best way to treat it without wasting your time, money, and resources on things that are just gonna damage in the long run. The best way to get in touch with me is probably Facebook. I do have a Facebook group called Wholesome Roots Farmstead Friends and people in my group are some of the most brightest gardeners I know and they are more than happy to help answer your gardening questions at any time, day or night. There's likely to be somebody responding right away. So please reach out there, send me a Facebook message, send me an email. I'm not as good about emails as I am Facebook messages, so just be warned if I get an email from you and I don't respond, it's not because I didn't mean to. <laughs> it's just I'm not as good about it. This is just over the garden fence along the pond. And I have taken advantage of this area to allow the wild blackberries to flourish. And as you can see, the bushes are covered in fruit and I even see some ripe ones now. So even something like wild blackberries that can quickly become a weed in your garden, being allowed to have their own space and their own place to flourish and grow can make a huge impact on your native environment and help you in the long run. I'm gonna go grab a bucket and get us some blackberries to go with our lunch today. That doesn't even count what I ate while I was picking, but my arms are and hands are all torn up by the thorns, so I'm taking a break. Well, I definitely could have kept picking 
if I wanted to. There were many, many more berries where those came from, but the thorns got all over my hands and wrists and forearms, so I'm feeling itchy and irritated now. So I'm gonna go in and wash the blackberry itch off and enjoy some blackberries with our lunch. That is gonna be so exciting. So if I hadn't left those blackberry plants to grow wild on the shore of my pond, then I wouldn't have this bounty. You don't have to agree with what I say or what I feel. There are some things that are truly just opinions and you don't have to be an organic gardener. You can be a conventional gardener and that's just fine too. I'm not telling you what to do on your homestead or in your garden. I am just trying to share with you the beauty that can come from doing it with a fair amount of letting it go and letting it grow and allowing things to be just how they're intended to be. It's how God created it. And fighting God is definitely not an easy task, nor one I recommend. So before clearing that next section of your property that you're not even using anyway, think about what could grow if you left it there and let nature take its course and allow the wildlife to move in and help protect your homestead. Before you decide you're going to broadcast a pesticide across your garden, think about how many ladybugs you've seen, how many honeybees you've seen, and just take into consideration that if you're treating everything with a strong pesticide, you're also treating them, and you're gonna remove them from your environment, and it won't end up with a healthy garden. As my friend Debbie from Debbie's Back Porch always says, when you know better, you do better. And that's all I'm here to do is to help share with you what I consider to be a better way of gardening and homesteading.